Hello everyone, welcome to your first lecture in Geographic Information Systems. To start this off, we're going to have a basic lesson in geodesy. Geodesy is the study of the shape and size of the Earth. Since we said geographic information systems are concerned with geospatially referenced information, knowing the size and shape of the Earth is an important foundational component to geospatial technologies. So whenever I start off, the first question that I always ask is what shape is the Earth? I hope you go with round. The Earth is round. I hope you didn't go with flat. Uh, in fact, the Earth is roughly spherical. It's not perfectly spherical. There'll be more on that later, but it's roughly spherical. It's a round object. And so that's why an excellent way to depict uh, the entire Earth is through the use of a globe. And I have one right here. Here is a globe. And we do want to be technically precise about this terminology. We do not live on a globe. A globe is a three-dimensional spherical model of the Earth. Sometimes you hear people talking uh, metaphorically, or uh, maybe they're trying to talk metaphorically, about us living on a globe, traveling around the globe, news coming to you from around the globe. Well, technically, that's not all that exciting because a globe is a scale model. It's not the same size as the Earth. It's actually a smaller representation of the Earth, of course. Uh, but in three dimensions, the spherical Earth, the roughly spherical Earth here. So we live on the Earth, uh, on the world, but if we make a model, a representation of the Earth, uh, then we've made a globe. So here is a globe right here, a model of the three-dimensional Earth. And it's round. Uh, you'll also notice, of course, that it is tilted, and we'll talk about the axial tilt uh, in a little bit later uh, lecture. Uh, we have actually known, uh, as the human civilization, that the Earth is round for some time. Uh, oftentimes people think that uh, knowledge that the Earth is flat uh, has been uh, common knowledge or standard knowledge uh, up until relatively recently, historically speaking. But as it turns out, people have known that we live on something round for a long time. Of course, because the Earth is round, you can start in one location and travel around and get back to your a starting location, but not all models of the Earth that are not globes, uh, that people have thought that they were flat or some other shape other than round, uh, have been able to come up with certain models uh, that have some kind of curvature to it. Uh, so even when people were traveling around the Earth, uh, there were some people who were saying that the Earth is not uh, completely round, but of course it is. Uh, I always ask my students as well, how do you know that you live on something round? You know, if we actually had to figure that out, how would you do this? Well, a lot of times people will say, well, they've seen uh, satellite images of it. Uh, people go out into space and take images of it. Or, oh, they know that if they travel around, uh, then they'll get to another location on the planet. Uh, well, some of these work, some of these don't. Of course, we can use uh, satellite imagery now to check out the size and shape of the Earth, uh, and we can go into space and take a look at it. Uh, but that has been a very, very recent occurrence. And so think about if you were uh, someone a thousand years ago or two thousand years ago, and you were trying to figure out what the shape of the object you were living on is, how would you do this? Let's say you were an ancient Greek. Say you were living in ancient Greece, and you're wondering, uh, what is the size and the shape of what I'm living on. Well, how would you find this out? This is one of my favorite stories for a lot of reasons. Because I talked about the origin of geography in ancient Greek scholarship, uh, it's very important here to go back to uh, what the ancient Greeks knew and how they were able to determine the size and the shape of the Earth. So the man who determined that we were living on something round and also determined how large it was was named Eratosthenes, and he was an ancient Greek, and he was born in 276 uh, BC. So that was a long time ago uh, to have discovered this information. So the knowledge that the Earth is round and how large it is has been with us for a long time. Eratosthenes really exemplifies the idea of knowledge not being uh, divided with crisp 
walls between different disciplines. Eratosthenes did all different kinds of things. He did astronomy, he did geography, uh, he wrote poetry, he did history. He was involved in so many different fields. And so another reason that I like Eratosthenes is because he really does exemplify to me uh, that uh, idea of being involved in many different disciplines, working at the edges of disciplines, and combining lots of different disciplines and knowledge in order to answer the kinds of questions that you have or the uh, problems that you want to solve. And he definitely did this. He was well known for being extremely knowledgeable in many different fields. Eratosthenes was born in about 276 BC, and he had the opportunity to go and study at the elite educational institution called the Academy uh, at Athens. And while he was there studying, he developed this reputation as this tremendous scholar. He developed such a reputation, as a matter of fact, that the pharaoh of ancient Egypt asked him to come and become a librarian at the Library of Alexandria. Now, at the time, the Library of Alexandria was one of the most preeminent educational institutions in the ancient world. And becoming a librarian at this library was the equivalent of an academic posting in today's world. So he accepted this offer and he went to Alexandria and actually in fairly short order he became the head librarian of the library at Alexandria, which is basically the preeminent academic position in all of the ancient world. While he was working there at the library at Alexandria, he was struck with an idea that would allow him to determine uh, the shape of the earth and also how large it was. So let's take a look at that and how he was able to determine that using some very simple observations and some basic geometry.